video, we'll go over some of the key features and tools within a Microsoft Teams meeting. Before you begin, make sure that you have created your class team and that you've secured your meetings um, as explained in previous videos. So once you've done that, I'm going to start my meeting. Let's assume it's December 21st at around 8.30 a.m. and I'm gonna start class early. So I'm gonna click join and you're gonna get a, uh, a few options here just before you start the meeting, uh, just to make sure that you're coming into the meeting with everything set the way you want. The first is to be able to toggle your camera on and off. So I can toggle it on. And one important feature is the background piece that uh, some teachers really like to have. Depending on your background, you might not uh, want it there. Uh, so you can turn on blur, kind of blur out the background, or you can actually put yourself in a completely different setting um, as well and just have uh, you know yourself sitting in, in some sort of other background. Totally up to you. I'm okay with my background, so I'm gonna leave it. And uh, the other thing that you can turn on is, or toggle, your is your computer audio. So right now, it's telling me that it's using my AirPods, which are my headphones, to uh, for both my mic and my speakers. But if I wanna change that, I can press the toggle button and I can switch between my computer speakers um, or my computer mic all before I actually enter the meeting. Okay, so once I'm ready, I'm gonna press join now. And at this point, students are getting um, they're getting a message on their end saying that uh, that um, this the meeting has started, so they can click it. Now, if they uh, if they don't have Teams open at the moment and they click on you know, but they know it's nine o'clock, it's getting close, and they click on their meeting link in the VLE, um, it'll bring them in, and they'll still be able to go to Calendar and see that the meeting has started and that they can join it. And because we have a secure meeting uh, set up, my student Katie is uh, waiting in the lobby to be admitted in. Maybe I mark her present, and at this point, I admit her in. Now, because we have set up the meeting as secure, Katie comes in as an attendee, so she's not able to share her screen, she's not able to remove students or mute me or anything like that. If I ever wanted to, just to be clear, I could click um, on the, the uh, participants icon, go over to Katie, and there's the three uh, dots there, click there, and I could make her a presenter where she would then be granted those rights for a period of time. Now, if I wanted as well, I could mute uh, Katie, but it looks like Katie came into the meeting um, correctly and is muted because she's followed those classroom norms, so um, I don't need to mute her at this time. But if she was an, uh, um, a student, you know, maybe you, abusing the, the uh, mic uh, privileges, I could click there and actually mute her right there. And because we've set the meeting up, she won't be able to uh, unmute herself. So a few other important features. Here's our chat conversation. You generally want that running so that you can always see what uh, the students are, uh, are um, chatting about. You can toggle that off, um, at least not allow students to be able to see. So um, Katie, if you wanna write something in the, there you go. So I'm able to see that. I can hover over her message. I could like it uh, or put a few other emojis and I can respond as well as we go through the, uh, the meeting. I can attach things, so if there's something I wanna share it to the students during a meeting um, that's easier to do it this way versus the VLE, I could quickly push it out through an attachment. Um, they could also raise their hands. This is a great uh, classroom norm to have up. So students just click on raise hand and you can see um, there's a little yellow box that goes around Katie because it, Katie now has her hand up. And if I go back to the show participants button, I can quickly get a view of who has her hand up. It's Katie. I would then maybe uh, indicate to Katie that we've gotten to her and we can uh, talk about uh, whatever question she has and she can put her hand back down. Um, and they were just clicking on the raise hand button. So I could do that as the teacher as well, but that's how they're doing it. Um, another important piece here is the share contents. So this is how to share your screen, okay? So I would click there and you get a number of options. The absolute number one uh, box that you'll click on is this first one to the far left under desktop. You wanna, wanna click here where it says screen one. And what it will do is it will share my entire screen um, for students. And if I switch between different browsers, I will be able to do that and students will be able to see it. Whereas if I only click, let's say here, 
under where it says window and I click on this, this is going to show a web browser. But if I leave that web browser, you know, to show something in um, uh, maybe in Smart Suite or something like that, Katie will still only be able to see this, this screen that I'm on. So you always want to be here because it will then always reflect what you're showing on your screen. And that's how to share that. If you want to turn your camera on and off, you'll find them right here. So I can toggle my camera on and off this way and you'll appear down in the far right corner. And same thing, I can turn my mic on and off as well. So at this point, Katie's turned her uh, camera off. That is a really good uh, uh, thing to do generally is to tell students, you know, especially if you are sharing your screen or trying to play a streaming video, you want students to turn all of their cameras off so that the bandwidth is uh, provided to, to actually have that uh, um, freeze up bandwidth to be able to see your uh, uh, shared screen or the video. The last piece here is breakout rooms, and this is a brand new feature. You can click there and it will basically uh, very quickly. So if I had, let's say uh, 20 students in here, I could click, I want four breakout rooms and you could make it automatic where it's just gonna put, you know, um, five students in each of the breakout rooms by random, or you can click manual. And then when you click uh, create rooms, it will allow you to kind of uh, choose what students are in which rooms and then you can jump between the rooms. So a really quick way to make quick breakout rooms for um, discussion. Obviously, if you're gonna use this feature, it's really important you talk about classroom norms and that although you may not be in the in the digital classroom at the time, you know, what does it look like and what is appropriate norms um, if the teacher isn't in the room. Those are the main features of Teams um, and being able to toggle between, you know, presenters, uh, all the different features along the top as well and should be able to get you going in synchronous learning. Oh, the last bit, almost forgot, is this button right here. This is an important one uh, that uh, should not be forgotten. I could press leave right here to leave the conversation with Katie. The problem there is it leaves the meeting open. Katie will still remain in the meeting. What I instead want to do is go over to the down arrow, click there, I want to end the meeting and what that will do is it will remove all students from the meeting and close out the meeting. It shuts the door to the classroom and no one's in the classroom. Whereas this, I leave, but I have left the classroom wide open for students to remain in it. So it's important that you, down, uh, you click the down arrow, press end meeting, and it will end the meeting until you start it up again.